Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I'm joined by Psychic Medium Liz Cross, and I, of course, am Mr. Reality. If you haven't joined Liz's Patreon, go to patreon.com forward slash remote viewing and beyond. And I wondered if we could talk to the Italian polymath astronomer, Galileo Galilei. Hi, Liz. Oh, hi. Yes, of course. And thank you for putting this probe together. That's amazing. Yes, I have him here. So it's been almost... 400 years since you were alive, how many incarnations have you had since being Galileo? And how many did you have as a human before Galileo? So he's had two reincarnations since Galileo, and he's currently on the earth plane now. Oh, okay. Does he know? Does he is he fascinated by the works of Galileo or does he like, nah? Uh, no, he's currently a kid addicted to video games. Okay. Maybe he's playing video games about space. Um, what's his goal in this lifetime as a kid addicted to video games? Where does he think that life is going? Well, where do you think that life is going? Uh, nowhere. If he can't break the addiction. And what was the plan for that life before he came down to it? We're going to get to Galileo's life too, but I'm just curious about how much of a, a direction or flow or ebbing do you have on that life current incarnated now? This is a very difficult lifetime for him now. Um, parents are drinkers and drug takers. He's left to his own devices, basically raising himself, and he's addicted to video games. How old are you? How old are you in this current lifetime? He's about 15. Uh, he doesn't go to school. He's allegedly homeschooled, but doesn't do any schoolwork whatsoever. And uh, this is going to be a very difficult life for him. What does Galileo think that the knowledge of having been Galileo in a past life would do to him now if his 15-year-old currently incarnated self knew he was Galileo? What do you think your yourself now would... Well, he wouldn't feel so hopeless and unmotivated. Uh, he also smokes marijuana, too, in this um, current lifetime that he's in. And he has lots of addictions. Like, he's just, he, he feels hopeless. He feels powerless. He feels like, I'm not going to amount to anything, so why even bother trying? And if he knew that he was Galileo, well, first of all, he wouldn't believe it. But then if he actually managed to believe it, that would pull him out of this drudgery that he's in. So why is that information hidden from us as we incarnate? Why can't we have an inkling or uh, a, a light that we were that then person before? Because you would, well, according to Galileo, you would be so focused on being that person as opposed to being your authentic self in this lifetime. So you would try to be that previous person. Did he say how many other lifetimes he's had? I forgot. Uh, no, he didn't. Uh, how many other lifetimes have you had? Human. Human lifetimes. About 200. Okay, that's a low number. What inspired him to pursue science and astronomy as a career? What inspired you to pursue science and astronomy as a career? Uh, his father. And just the sense of wonder. And I'm saying, but you don't have that sense of wonder now. No, it's completely diminished with these addictions, right? Right. So he's gone from this person who is a critical thinker who you know wonders about the world the structure went against the grain to this humdrum you know miserable sort of existence so what brought him to first consider the idea of heliocentricity i don't even know what that was that you just said <laughs> 
what, what heliocentricity. You your big words. Go on. Tell us all about it. People are like, I can't understand that guy. He uses big words. They're like four syllables. No, he um he didn't yeah, prove we, the we, heliocentric we to... system that we have, but you know, the 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 sun was the center of our spinning rotation. And that's the heliocentric idea, which was why he was imprisoned by the church. So what did he study past past information or did he just base it on his own observations? It was on his own observations. You know, we tried to stay monosyllabic here. Um, no, it was based you do. on. <laughs> I'm right. I'm teasing. It was based upon his own observations. And was he very religious? And was he taken aback by the heresy charge that the church leveled against him? Were you taken aback by the. Um, no, not really. It was to be anticipated. Um, it, 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 it was, you know, it was sort of obvious, really. It, he's saying it was just only a matter of time. There was a lot of pressure on him to stop. And he refused to do so. Did he study lots of Aristotle and Plato and other great philosophers? I mean, study's a strong word, he says. Um, he would compile their their things, but he says these these came to him in like forms of downloads. Like I feel like he was getting a lot of information. You know, he would partake in a substance. Now this is interesting. He would partake in a substance that would would allow him to find out other information. What is this substance? How can I get it? And what are the downsides? <laughs> right. No, God, you're so funny. Um, something that he would chew. It was some sort of leafy substance that he would chew. And he would have a list of questions. And then he would go on this exploration with his consciousness. Oh, wow. Hmm. Can I get some of that? No, no. <laughs> was it their downsides to taking it? Yes, it was addictive. Okay. But any other downsides? Highly addictive. Any other downsides? <laughs> <laughs> he, I mean, I like the answers of the universe. That's why I teach remote viewing. But, you know... <laughs> Well, yeah, because, you know, let's ask him this question. You know, do you, do you think that back then you were doing a form of remote viewing? Yes, but it wasn't structured as properly as remote viewing, right? So if you would have had re so remote viewings around today, do you believe that in this current lifetime you're in that you will end up going on a consciousness exploration again and, and you could do so with remote viewing. No, he's completely trapped. He has to get out of this trap. And that's something that he has in a lot of his lifetimes where he's trapped. I mean, that would coincide with him being jailed as Galileo actually, because he just showed me that link. So if he's not trapped one way, he's trapped in another way. And in this this particular lifetime he's in now, he's trapped himself with his own consciousness as opposed to being trapped by the church. <clears throat> does he feel, what does he think that the catalyst will be for him in this current incarnation to get out of the slump he's in? What will be the catalyst to get you out of the slump? that you're in he needs to have something fascinating like what he had when he was galileo right um what was the catalyst as galileo 
the catalyst is Galileo was to prove, you know, it was really kind of a separation from the church. He didn't feel that what he was being taught or what people were talking about was accurate. He just instinctively knew. So I'm going to ask him this question. Were you a psychic in that lifetime? He believes, yes, he was. Were you a medium? No, not so much a medium, but he did have psychic awareness, psychic, you know, some sort of psychic ability. Um, very intuitive. So in this current lifetime that you're in, do you have those simu similar intu intuition? Like, are you, are you psychic? He does have this sort of ability in this lifetime, but it's completely shut down with the lifestyle. Is that propensity to be psychic more energy-based or more physical-based or more brain-based or oh, soul-based? That's a good question. Is it more soul-based? Is it brain-based? It's, it's all in the brain. Is it soul-based, though? It, well, the soul has to decide, right? And what about, what were the other two? Energy-based, soul-based. Is it energy-based? No. Is it physical? I mean, the physical characteristics to be psychic were predetermined by the soul before coming into the lifetime. Do you, is it, do you have to have, so would you have to reincarnate through a soul family that is also a, yes. Wow. Okay. He says, yes, you would have to have some genetic element. So would you, are you saying you have to have some sort of genetic element? Yes. It's essential. Some sort of genetic element to bring this forward into this lifetime. So now I have to ask him another question. Okay. Does everybody have this potential genetic element? No. Are there drugs or vitamins or supplements that you can take to enhance your psychic intuition? Are there, are there drugs? And what are they and where can I get them? <laughs> Come on, you're so silly. You, you're very intuitive. I am already. Yes. If yes. I were more intuitive, my head, would it be like one of those Talosians on Star Trek? The first episode. Okay. Again, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, beam me up, Mr. Reality. Okay. So what, what, is there anything that like anybody can do? So when we come here in a physical body, we have a lot of blockages. Now, this is where you're talking about the energy, right? And it's, you know, it's important to, you know, sort of get through those blockages, pierce through those layers, and then unlock that ability. But that's only energetically. It doesn't mean that you were genetically predisposed and it comes easy for you. It means that maybe if you work hard enough, you can bust through those layers energetically. You don't need drugs to be okay. Right. Supplements, okay. nootropics. No, you, you don't need that, but I'm saying you're telling us brain prods. No. <laughs> yeah. But I'm telling him you're saying no yet in that, lifetime as galileo you used to chew something right we need more of that chewing stuff but he's saying no no we've come farther than that now all right we can do it through piercing through layers of energy is i what do that saying. pierce through layers of reality what was childhood like growing up in pisa um it was quite a peaceful childhood it was very obedient it was all about obeying the church and nobody really questioned 
uh, God's word. You know, it was just very obedient, quiet, pleasant. Um, but he obviously was seen as a bit of a rebel because he was always questioning. Uh, what about this? What about that? Why is it, you know, and, and that, those were questions that could not be answered. And so that's where he became a bit of annoying to a lot of people because instead of arousing suspicion and, and creating more questions through his line of questioning, they, they would just stifle him. Did he feel like his father helped him encourage him because i read somewhere he almost wanted to be a painter but then went into different areas of study did your father encourage you his father told him to be anything that he wanted to be and basically said you know don't worry about what everybody else thinks it's you have to be you what was your life like with uh, your wife, Marine Gamba? So that's going to be his wife again in this current lifetime. And she's going to try and pull him out of the addictions. Um, it's going to be very difficult. What was your life like back then? I mean, it was very quiet. They didn't really talk too much. Um, he was very dedicated to his work. I mean, she had her job and her roles that she did, and, and he had his. Does he feel like he had close friends and collaborators in his astronomy forays? Were there people that he worked with or did he feel like he was at odds with everybody in that field based on his teachings and thoughts? Did you feel like you had, you know, friends and, and I mean, he did, there was a close circle, uh, but they would have to kind of meet in secret. They would sit around almost like outside at this wooden, he's showing me, was it like a wooden tree stump? And they would have these discussions and over wine. They would have wine. Um, but these discussions were very, like, low-key discussions. You couldn't have these discussions outside of that little circle. And... You know, you never knew who was going to betray you. You never knew if these people were going to, were they, were they moles for the church? It was a difficult Right, you got to watch yourself. They were pretty, uh, that was the best gossip situation. I mean, it was almost like a intelligent gathering arm of the church back then. Can you tell us what he felt when he observed the moon, the first three moons of Jupiter through his telescope? you feel when you observe the first the first three moons of Jupiter through your telescope what did you feel well he made a very very important discovery and he is saying that he just wanted to tell everybody and show everybody right but he had to think about how that information was was going to be delivered. Tell you us how to, he was. Go ahead. Had, sorry, you had to be very cautious. You know, when dealing with it, you always had to make sure the church was always held in the utmost regard and respect and. And, you know, you always had to downplay your information. Can you paint us a picture of the garb that he appears to be wearing in front of you right now? What is this that you're wearing? Um, 
That is what somebody would wear, he says, who had higher intellect. It was almost like a display of someone who was knowledgeable. But we can't see it. I'm asking you, what do you see oh, when you look at this? I thought you meant like his outfits that he normally wears. So what is he wearing now? Is he Yes, what's he wearing me? right now? Chatting with you. He's wearing like black trousers that are almost like skinny jeans or skinny trousers, right? Very fashionable. Yeah. And he's wearing these shiny leather sort of shoes. And he's wearing a button down. Um, black but kind of a little shimmery uh, shirt like dress shirt and uh, he does have a beard but it's very manicured like very you know it's actually kind of pointy it goes into a point <laughs> yeah and he's slim he's very slim he appears young as he's talking to me, he, he's showing himself young and very attractive. And um, yeah. How many other times has he presented himself in this manner to another medium? Or has he been interviewed by other psychic mediums before? Have you been interviewed by any other psychic mediums before? Talk to them only one time. And it was just for somebody's own personal you know, information. What does he feel some misconceptions are about him that he'd like to give us a chance to clear up? What do you have? Do you feel that there were misconceptions about you that you would like to clear up? There was a misconception that he didn't love his wife. Um, and I'm saying, well, who believed that? Everybody in the town believed that. Why? Um, he had affairs. They're all dead. <laughs> right, we don't. right. But they, they're, they, he had affairs. Uh, but he wanted, he wanted us to know that he did love his wife, and he will love her again in this lifetime. And the, the fact of the matter is, he may not give her enough credit. But he he actually uh, can't live without her. And in this lifetime, it's going to be very, very apparent because she's going to try to get him to break these addictions. And she's going she's not going to give up on him. She's really going to keep trying. And she believes in him and they will have children, but it's going to be a very difficult life. Um, how many children you're going to have, they're going to have three or four children, but she's going to end up being the breadwinner. He's going to have all these mental health issues. Did you have those types of problems when you were at Galileo? And he said, yes. I mean, he did have a bit of an addictive personality and he was a big flirt too. Massive flirt. Did you ever see any extraterrestrial craft as Galileo? Or ET experiences you'd like to share? He always believed in ETs. Um, did you ever have any contact with them? Yes, he did. At one time, he would Let's see hear about that. strange things going across his telescope. It was as if they knew that he was looking in his telescope. So sometimes they would block his view. And even if he moved his telescope to the left or to the right, they would block the view of the telescope just to make themselves known. Wow. Can we bring in that extraterrestrial agency and see where they're from, what they're doing, what their appearance is? Ooh, can we bring? Okay, so I have them here. Oh, um, hi, friends. Thanks for joining us. There, there are some space aliens, astronauts up on the ISS. If you could go pick them up and bring them back down, that would be great. Yeah, really. Um, they're from really far away. They don't like to have too many connections to Earth. They don't 
really like the Earth plane that much. They think were they that physically funny. here when they Galileo was looking out? How did they know to put themselves on the path of his telescope? Because they could read his mind. They knew exactly what he was going to do before he did it. And what do they present themselves as looking like to you? As I see them now, they're just a ball of energy. They're kind of green and black in color. They're a ball of green and black and colorful energy. Yes. You're not wearing any skinny jeans? No, no. Okay. No. Are they still having any contact with Earth humans now? No, they kind of gave up on that. They didn't. See How long form. ago were they in physical form? How long ago were they in physical form? That was like a thousand years ago when they were really sort of um, physical form. But now uh, oh, they only like made blobs for uh, Galileo. But as far as like being in physical form, it's not, they say it's a waste of energy. It takes a lot of energy to do that. And they don't want to expend that much energy. Do they think that humans will evolve to a state where they're no longer physical beings, but beings of energy? Ooh, God, that's a good question. Do you think that humans will evolve to a state, a non-physical state? They would love for humans to reach that level because then humans would have more self-control over where they end up. But no, I'm getting a no. Well, Galileo, let's cross aliens. Thank you so much for joining us and everybody out there. We appreciate you and your time. We didn't know where this was going. I mean, that's the thing about all of these probes. You never know what information you're going to get. And I just have to say thank you. I mean, you put this together. This is all your own idea. And uh, you just everybody, I just think Mr. Reality is fabulous. And please show your love. He does have a tip jar in the comments. Thanks, everybody. See you next time. Yeah, this was fabulous. You and your big words, too.